It's Ask an Engineer. It's a bunch of texture mapping. That's kind of uh, mesmerizing. Mesmerizing. Yeah. Uh, we've got an exciting show for you tonight. It's time for the weekly Ask an Engineer. It's me, Lady Ada, with yeah. me, Mr. Lady Ada. We're broadcasting live from the Adafruit factory. That's right behind us. That's where we do all of the testing and manufacturing and coding and shipping and support of the electronic goodies that you love to put in your projects. And as always, we've got a jam-packed week of news and giveaways and new products coming soon, uh, help wanted and more. Uh, let's just kick off this party. Let's get this party started. Right. Mr. Leviator, what's on tonight's show? On tonight's show, the code is RoboHeart, mostly because this, um, this video is kind of cooled in. I did this project, we'll talk about it later. But the code is RoboHeart, 10% off the native food store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern time tonight. Everything except for gift certificates, Adabox and Code Academy courses supports us, an open source hardware company in New York City. You know how you hear about all those companies that had funding or didn't work out or all sorts of nightmares or mergers or acquisitions? Not us, because you're going to buy something and you're going to keep us away from that terrible poison chalice with the code RoboHeart. <laughs> it supports all of the folks here who make and ship and code all the things. It's a wholesome RoboHeart. Yeah. Full of Robo blood. Show and tell people right. around the world showing and sharing projects. Lady Ada will talk about that I and will. more. Make Code Minute from JP and some of the things that JP is up to from JP Show. Python on Hardware News. Time travel, look around the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. News and more. Help wanted some jobs and or skills from the Adafruit Jobs Award, jobs.adafruit.com. The free jobs board that we moderate and try to get the best makers for companies out there and the best skills published for companies looking for folks to join their organizations and more. 3D printing, got some videos from Neon Pedro. Some made in New York City factory footage. We've got some new products. We're going to answer questions. We do that over in Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. You can start putting them there anytime throughout the show, but the best time is towards the end. Join all 13,000 of us there. We'll do some top secret. we got some top secret stuff. We've got a trivia question, all that and more on, you guessed it. Dun, dun, dun. Ask an engineer. Ooh, we're having a good time here. Okay, um, just remember, paying some bills here, uh, RoboHeart. Remember, the heart of the robot. Yeah, and uh, a couple of things going on, don't forget, Circuit Python Day turned into Circuit Python Week, and then it turned into Circuit Python Month. And sticker, so we decided, sticker, sticker. Yeah, you know, we decided let's put a CircuitPython.org sticker in every order. So Lady, when I'm elected, like, a Circuit Python in every pot. Yeah, and Lady, I'll talk about the different tiers of free things you get in your orders, including the free Circuit Python That's right. sticker. Correct. If you order anything with at least one dollar in your cart or more, which is not hard, just with one dollar is the minimum, you'll get a free yeah. Blinka vinyl circuit python sticker you can stick it on your laptop your desk your computer your face your cat but not recommended anything you like uh with the consent of the person or animal getting stickered 99 dollars or more you get a free perma proto half-sized breadboard so it's the same size and shape as your solidless breadboard so you can take your project and once you're ready to make it permanent solder it onto this 
nicely made uh, three color silk screen PCB right up here. $199 or more, you'll get free UPS ground shipping in the continental United States. So that's free uh, shipping um, for anything but Hawaii and Alaska. And it's trackable, it's insured, it'll show up when it says it's gonna show up. It's our favorite domestic American shipping method. And $299 or more, you'll get a free Circuit Playground Express, our all-in-one development board with a SAMD21 processor, Cortex-M0 that can run Arduino, Circuit Python, MakeCode, MakerBlocks, code, uh, CS, Code.org, CS Discoveries, um, Teeny Go, and other fine development uh, platforms. Uh, and best of all, it's got all the sensors and LEDs and capacitive touch built in, so no solderings required. It's like plug and play and free with your order of 29 or more. Okay. Don't forget for shipping UPS, ground, best in the US. Um, if you want to wait a little while and you enjoy mysteries, Postal might be for you. And DHL, it's if you like a mystery. So sometimes when you use Postal, it disappears for a bit. And, uh, and then it like reappears. And then it reappears is how the, the tracking system works sometimes <laughs> or not. Ghost. And then DHL for international. Um, not ghostly. DHL's yeah. quite good too. For um, same day delivery in New York City, just check out before 11 a.m. And if your zip code is one of the ones in Manhattan, it will go out same day and get to you same day. Little reminder, Labor Day, Monday, we're not shipping because it's a national holiday. So if you order something on Friday after 11, it might not ship until Tuesday. Just keep that in mind. But okay. take Labor Day off. It's Labor Day. Yeah. All right. Lady Ada, people around the world show and share their projects every single week. What was on the show and tell and who shared it? I'm glad you asked. We had Sorry. Melissa coming by showing off her TensorFlow demo with a Raspberry Pi 4. We're trying to write a guide on how to install TensorFlow Lite and run on a Raspberry Pi, which is pretty exciting because things are very changing a bowl with TensorFlow, but we're getting there and she showed uh, detecting a syringe. It's funny, it's like it's one of the items in the Cocoa model uh, that it can detect and she happens to have one. So she's like holding up a syringe and it's like syringe, 85%. And she's gonna get OpenCV going next. So it'll draw a little box over the object too, which is cool. Um, JP is showing off this week's uh, project, which is taking the monster mask and embedding it into a off the shelf mask. And it'll show some techniques um, for how to do that, including this incredibly spooky doll mask, uh, which is from some movie I haven't seen. Um, and uh, that's tomorrow on JP's workshop. Non Pedro showed off this week's 3D printed project. It's a crankable solder holder for little solder rolls. Uh, you can pull the solder out and then crank it back this little crank on the side they love these crank things and also they spent this week making a bunch of instagram filters if you go to instagram.com slash adafruit and you follow us which is a good idea anyways because we post all sorts of cool stuff you'll get access to not one not two but three instagram face filters one that'll give you neopixel eyes one yeah. that'll give you blink eyes and one that'll give you monster mask we'll eyes. show some of those as a preview we had just submitted them and uh, they were accepted, so it was going to be a coming soon. But, but it, now it's it like coming show. now. Yeah, coming so we'll, is. we'll show those a little bit later in the show. Right. Scott uh, came by to talk about the new refresh display code in CircuitPython. You can now control the refresh rate of your displays much better, which makes it great for gaming because you can pause refresh, which takes time, while you do some more uh, state computation. Also means that you get, uh, if your game isn't fast enough, instead of, um, having weird refreshes, you will just slow down a little bit, which is uh, you know what humans like a little bit more. Um, and uh, he did a demo of Celeste uh, for Circuit Python, the port running on a gamer uh, Pi gamer and a Pi badge, also on a Game Boy Color, which he got working as well, which is pretty neat. And he's going to be going to PAX West to check out um, gaming handhelds and uh, talk to other people about gaming with Circuit Python. So we're always. Uh, making more improvements to CircuitPython every day. Uh, Mike B came by to demo one of the two guides uh, that were written this week. Uh, one guide is about using uh, Web USB with um, Arduino and CircuitPython, uh, sorry, TD USB and Arduino. Um, we wrote some code to do it, but now we have a guide to, to show it off as well. Um, and also a guide on the new storage and data logging modules in MakeCode, which is neat. Uh, I didn't know that they existed, but then last week, uh, JMK came by, showed it off, and we're like, that's really cool. Let's, let's do a guide about that. So you can data log to the SPI flash on your Circuit Playground Express, which is cool. 
Um, Chris Young uh, wrote a guide this week, so came, uh, he came by to talk about that guide. It's how to make your own circuit board design for infrared transmission and receiving with uh, high current transmission uh, using transistors. Uh, so we went through the history of this board design, one of the first boards he ever designed. He does a lot of infrared uh, reception control. Um, that's how he controls stuff around his house. So uh, the guide we'll talk about as well uh, later in the show. Um, Chris S. showed up a couple projects, uh, really lovely, well-made projects. Some of them made at Tech Shop while it was still around, including a plywood and acrylic nightlight with beautiful cutouts and neopixels, and like a pachinko art word project that takes nouns and verbs that you select with the pachinko machine, and then it's gonna like print out a poem or something, and uses feathers and trinkets to control the game logic. It looks really cool and colorful. Um, and then uh, M. Costi came by to give us an update on the pixel stick, the uh, light painting stick that he's been working on uh, with CircuitPython and Itsy Bitsy M4. Um, he made a 3D printed battery mount and a snap fit case, and also showed us some uh, first run photos, including Hello World and Yon Cat, of course. Okay, all participants on the show and tell get as seen on show and tell sticker. Just email supportedafort.com if you're a kid, please have parent or guardian like entity email for you it's part of our Adafruit live series of shows JP show is tomorrow 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 Thursday um, it's Halloween a couple things uh, working on eyes eyes and then in the beginning of the show we showed this there's a lot of um, 3d animation and more because it's monster mass time so here's that here's that video again in case you're wondering how texture mapping works Every single week on JP Show, there is Make Code Minute. Tomorrow there'll be a Make Code Minute. And this is the most recent Make Code Minute. Take it away, JP. Make it away. So what I want to talk about in the Make Code Minute today is how you can create sub-strings within a string of external NeoPixels. So what you'll see here is I have a setup where on my start block I'm calling a function called make strip and that creates a strip of NeoPixels that has uh, 24 pixels on pin A1 and so that's what I've got uh, plugged in here on my Circuit Playground Express. Uh, and then when I go to the next function it says make substrips and what I'm doing is using this set sub, and I'm calling it sub zero, it's a variable I created, to strip so that's the original strip I created, from range zero, so it starts at pixel zero, with five pixels in it. So what this is doing is it's treating our single strip like it is four virtual strips. So I've set up four of them, and what this does is it makes other things you wanna do much, much simpler. So what you'll see uh, is, I'll go and light them up, that part's not that interesting. But then look what happens when I, when I hit buttons. I'm actually, using this NeoPixel rotate command to rotate through a strip, but instead of going around the whole 24 pixels before it gets back to one, each of those go through their own little sets. So watch this, as I press the button A on my, Neo, on my uh, Circuit Playground Express, you'll see that I'm passing through all five of those pixels and then back to the beginning as if they're four separate strips. I was able to color them separately, you could animate them separately. Uh, it's a really neat trick that allows you to create fairly sophisticated effects with a very minimal amount of code. And so that is how you can turn a single physical strip of NeoPixels into a set of multiple virtual strips of NeoPixels right inside of Make Code. And that is your Make Code Minute. As always, don't forget, makecode.adafruit.com, plug in your Circuit Playground Express. You can also check out, um, there's a uh, new update for, for Arcade yeah. that's faster. Um, we just blogged about that. And then check out adafruitdaily.com. We're going to have the Make Code newsletter coming out soon. So we got a lot going on. Speaking of a lot going on, 
It's Python on Hardware time. Blinka, blinka, blinka. All right, so. What's new? This week, the headline generator machine what is it? <laughs> yeah. generated the following. CircuitPython snakes its way to Micro Center. Yeah. Yep, in the most recent newsletter from Micro Center, check out Blinka. And yeah, stop, he's there. Stop by Micro Center and get all the CircuitPython powered boards and all your favorite boards from Adafruit. So we worked with Andy over at Micro Center. Go to the store, buy CircuitPython boards there, say you want more CircuitPython stuff, and they'll do it and they'll listen to you. Next up. Um, we had a new series of, uh, of, of things in the newsletter yeah. that, that, we, that we like. Um, this one is, what is uh, Brian and Dan and Melissa up to? So what are Brian and Dan and Melissa up to? Well, I, I like this. This is my favorite part of the newsletter every week now because we do so much stuff that I feel like sometimes it doesn't get captured because we're moving so fast. And I know. we have a blog post or do something. So this is a really easy way to see what some of the team is working on who works on CircuitPython and some of the hardware that you know and love. Yes. Uh, Brian wrote the Circuit Python driver for the MSA 301, low cost 3 axis accelerometer, and wrote the guide to go along with it. Afterwards, he assembled and started the process of testing prototypes of the TLV 493 board design by Catney. Yep, and he actually got the driver done yesterday or today. Good work. Yay. Dan this is a cute blink. Yep. Look at this. This is Dan in costume. Um, Dan Debug BLE on the new Circuit Playground Express Bluefruit. And it's now working fine. He got BLE HID keyboard working from CircuitPython, sending keystrokes over BLE to Linux, Windows, Mac OS, and Android, and he is still debugging iOS support. It's hard. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but Melissa finished up adding CircuitPython display quick start section to the last three display guides. After that, Melissa wrote up a guide for controlling an RGB message panel from Stream Deck. The guide includes the first design done in Fusion 360. Congratulations, Melissa. Yay. On that. Okay. Next up, um, I put this as a, as a feature because I think this is a big deal. Yes, um, we have a new guide from Catney yeah. on PyLinting. So we use PyLint uh, for all of our 180 or so uh, um, drivers and of course the hundreds of uh, example codes. We use PyLint to lint our code to make sure that it is as pretty looking as possible and also um, doesn't have a lot of the common mistakes that uh, people do when they're coding. Um, or things that make it hard to understand, because uh, Python is, you know, it's a little, a little bit picky about, you know, things like uh, tabs versus spaces and how long lines are. So uh, people who've never used lint before are like, what, you know, I'm trying to add some code or I'm trying to fix a bug. I mean, it's PyLint error. What is this? How do I fix it? So you forget all about that. Katni, who is uh, queen of PyLinting, uh, went through some tips and tricks on how to get PyLint running locally on your computer, so you don't have to wait for uh, CI or Travis to run it, and also how to fix common issues and some things that can come up while you're linting that might seem like setbacks but are actually successes. Okay, Hackspace Magazine. Sir, Python snakes his way back to Hackspace Magazine. In fact, it's on the cover. I like that they're doing, like every month, they have a little bit with CircuitPython, which is really cool. We're, you know, we're working really hard to have almost daily or weekly new features, new guys, new capabilities. And uh, we try to make it as easy as possible for people to do stuff with CircuitPython. And I think that if you have a weekly magazine, having like a half a page or a quarter page with whatever's new in CircuitPython, you'll always have something new. Yeah. You know, you'll have content. <laughs> they're, they're once a month and they uh, do a really good job. This is a lot. Um, take from me, someone had to work on a quarterly magazine. So they have um, some graphic couple, stuff? A couple uh, features, control the screen with CircuitPython and graphical output for almost any board. Both of those are CircuitPython related. Yep. Next up, uh, Scott was on a podcast. We posted that in the newsletter. You can listen to the whole thing. It's about 35 minutes. It's testing code, Python testing and development, episode 84, CircuitPython with Scott Shawcroft. Talks about CircuitPython, um, all the testing, all of the things that go into CircuitPython, Blinka, the library that allows you to use CircuitPython APIs for non-CircuitPython versions, such as CPython on Linux and MicroPython, including Raspberry Pi, all that and more. Next up, if you want to learn all about gaming using CircuitPython, there is a workshop by DeshiPoo at yes. Flip the World. Yes, pew pew. This is in Zurich. And um, you can uh, learn more about it. You can follow DeshiPoo on Twitter, but you can also go to flickthe-world.ch. All right. Cedar Grove, who I think is in the chat tonight. Shout out to Cedar Grove. This is a um, digipot. Yeah, always coming up with good hardware, so we like to feature it. Um, thanks for tagging us this, um, when you make these. This is the AD5245 uh, digital pot breakout from Cedar Grove. 
check That's it out nice. on GitHub and more. Um, speaking of hardware, Feather takes flight with the XB3 boards from SparkFun. Yeah, this is a Feather compatible. They don't call Feather, they call it Thing Plus, and it's a little bit longer, but you can use Feather Wings with it. That's right. And now it's using the XB modules. I didn't know they had these little uh, wireless modules. I don't use, honestly, I actually don't use XBs that much. I've kind of moved on to doing Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and LoRa. Um, XB most. has their own version of uh, MicroPython, too, so if you're interested yeah. in MicroPython, this might you be can You can run MicroPython on these, and then... Um, using our Blinka compatibility layer, you can probably run our drivers. Um, haven't tried it, but I think somebody should, and they'll probably find success. Okay. Speaking of feathers and more, um, over on the MicroPython GitHub, you can see looks like MicroPython support is There's coming activity. to the Feather M0 Express, the uh -huh. Adafruit Itsy Bitsy M4, the Trinket M0, the Mini Sam. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of there's so a lot Sam of Sam D, D stuff. Coming. Sam D's coming. So the the thing I will mention is that this got merged recently. It's only I think the USB REPL right now. It's using teeny USB. You can get a REPL. I don't believe there's any hardware interfacing yet, but that's coming. If, if next. you're really into this, you you know what this is about, and you're going to check it out. Yeah. Okay. And maybe have them out. Next up, um, Nordic announced that they have their uh, Thingy 91. It's nordicsemi.com/thingy91. And uh, it has one of our favorite chips on it, also has some cellular. So we'll figure out if there is something that we can do with this. Next up. Nice. On the show and tell, Scott mentioned this, but I also wanted to screenshot it. So we posted up this video, and Gadget, um, I worked at a long time ago, posted up a video of Playdate, and they went through some of the development, some of the testing, and they also said, never going to be a lockdown device. So for us, that's very interesting. And Scott's going to be at PAX asking them, um, what we can do to get CircuitPython and more running on it. I think we'd have a really big developer community, and that's what it's all about, making games. So I think that'll be kind of cool. Um, the opposite of a open device is when things get locked down. And it looks like, and this is, you know, I'm on these calculator sites. You're like on the calculator. I am on the, yeah, yeah and is, it is a site. This is TI Planet. This is TI Planet. And TI Planet. It's a said, planet. And TI Planet said, hey, like, looks like TI is locking down third party firmware on the calculators that originally started supporting CircuitPython, it was a version of CircuitPython, then they called it something else, and now it's a little unclear about the future of putting third-party firmware on the TI Python module and or the calculator. So we'll see. Little bit of unknowns. Um, hopefully they'll allow people to do that if they really want to. Maybe they could just agree agree that my calculator might not work afterwards. I think hacking stuff is, is kind of... If you're hacking your calculator, you know what? You're you're in the good spot. I mean, they benefited but, from using open yeah. source circuit Python. So. Yeah, so I think I think TI should uh, allow this. Okay, uh, next up, we're still on the, the watch for um, a RISC V device that has lots of RAM and USB. This Getting one has, closer. This one has a little bit of RAM, but it has USB. This is a Giga device. It's the GD32V RISC V. Yes, yeah, Giga device. We actually use their flash. The QSPY flash we use on our boards is from Giga device. It's, yeah. it's high quality. Um, Espressif also uses the GD uh, so, QSPY flash, and they're they're also well known for making STM32 compatibles, um, not licensing STM32 design, but making pin pin yeah. compatible boards. So this is similar. This is kind of like an STM32 pin compatible, but it uses RISC-V. And like I said, it's it's getting closer because it has native full speed USB, but it doesn't have a lot of RAM. We need a little bit more memory if we're going to use this. Yeah. for Circuit Python, hopefully but like 64K or more. We'll be there. But we'll get there. Way. So that's why we, we put this. It's like, hey, here's the direction things are going. Uh, we joined the RISC-V Foundation. We have some uh, RISC-V uh, feathers planned and more. So anywho. And then uh, this was on the PyCon blog. Next year, 2020, April 15th to the 23rd, PyCon is going to be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're probably going to go because that's Yeah, that's ride. pretty close. Yeah. And... Uh, We'll see folks there probably. We'll probably do something as well, and uh, it's close to us, so looking forward to that. And then up until September 2nd, there is a massive Python programming humble bundle. Uh, it benefits foundations and charities. Check it out. You can get like 360 something dollars worth of stuff, and it's DRM free, multi format, and lots of good things. This one is by No Starch Press and Humble Bundle. And with that, is the Python on Hardware News. That's the Blinken News. Okay, next up, time travel. Okay. Ooh, what happened about like 15 years ago? Well, um, a couple things. Um, this is more just like ongoing news. So, oh, yeah. Uh, 
I thought you were going to talk about the 15 year anniversary. Well, Hackaday is going to be 15 yes. years old on September 3rd. Okay. And on Wednesday, September 11th at 3 p.m., we're going to be on a hack chat with the machine learning folks from Google, and you're going to be talking about machine learning on the edge with microcontrollers. Yes, which is something on I the know. Edge. Almost nothing about, but I know more than most people. That's right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm just a little bit ahead. <laughs> yeah. The, the thing is, we're, we're actually able to run TensorFlow and microcontrollers, which is really hard to do. Yeah. So we're going to be doing that talk and more. It's a text chat. We'll also have a video chat and more. And uh, so, that's the, so that was the 15-year Hackaday. They're going to be celebrating that at Supercon in November. Hack Chat is on September 11th, Wednesday at 3 p.m. And then Happy Birthday, Linux. Um, Yay, it's 28, right? 28 years old. And um, one of the cool things, so I, I had this post go up on Sunday at midnight or 12.01. And uh, it was from the, the person who started at Linus. And this was uh -huh. the, the opening sentence. I'm doing a free operating system, just a hobby. And you can, I posted up the original message that was on this news group. Um, turned 28. It was... Its birthday is essentially August 25th. There's debate. He even said, oh, there's probably like four birthdays all together if you want to talk about the I know, but I think, I think when they yeah. first post, when there's something that has a timestamp on it, I think that's good enough. Yeah, and then this was the, the Linux penguin that he liked that then Tux came from. Yeah. So it's from some show that I don't remember. It's anymore. from yeah. Walton Gromit, so it looks sort of I guess it could ask. be. Let me, yeah. see. Let me see if there's any, uh, any images. You're gonna... No, you have to go to, like, you have to go to Wikipedia and look for Tux. You have to penguin. go to Lic Linuxipedia. Like the Wikia, just for Linux? Yeah. But it's got that kind of clay animation look. Yeah. Teeth, so it's, also? It probably is. Okay. Probably, probably so that's bad. Linux. That's Hackaday. Yeah. Okay. And then what else is new? Next up. Um, or this old. is This is kind of news in our industry, in our world. And I guess this is like more insider baseball stuff, but um, Sphero and Little Bits are now one company. Merged. So Little Bits was started by Aya. She was at the MIT Media Lab. We had her on the show, I'm had sure. Had her on the show a bunch of times. Bunch of times. Also, uh, when they came out, we stocked her products for a bit. Correct. And then um, I was at iBeam. You were at iBeam. Yes. And then... Um, was she at iBeam? She was at iBeam, but I think she was at iBeam after me. I'm getting... I can't remember. Not at the same time, but... No. Was also at, at she was also at the Media Lab. I was at the Media Lab. We were at this, in the Cube. Yeah. So, uh, a couple things about this merger. It's interesting, um, not a lot of details, because when you hear terms not disclosed, mm. that's how, like, un unless they want, people want to talk about the money, you, they'll say terms not disclosed or whatever. And then the other part yeah. of it is, um, Aya is no longer the, the CEO. Um, she Correct. posted, the, the day it was announced, she said, that today's my last day, so she's out. In fact, when I emailed her, um, I got She's a, like, I'm on vacation. I, no, I got, I got an R reply. It says, I'm no longer little bits. Here's the people to talk to, and then here's my yeah. personal account. So, um, this it, is good. She can work on more stuff. Yeah. She has actually lots of good ideas. So uh, also, little bits, uh, Aya was one of the people who started the open source uh, hardware and Little Summit. bits was open source. Yeah, and little bits. So right now, I don't know if this is going to change, but on GitHub, um, the... Little the bits that were open sourced are still there yes. from five years ago, and then of course I looked around and I'm like, oh cool, it looks like little bits at least a couple weeks ago may have started doing something uh, with Make Code because they have a yeah. fork of Make Code and it looks like a couple PXT uh, yeah. yeah a couple pull requests so a little unknown so Sphero also uh, in the news recently they uh, did a Kickstarter. And it's for the the, the, the rover. The rover, yeah. Yeah. And they also uh, they're funded. So um, I pulled the funding stuff. You can get this any website. Um, a member of Crunchbase. So here's a couple things. Um, little bits altogether, sixty two million in funding. Yeah. They had six rounds, and now they're merged with. Um, I mean, two years ago, both Sphero and Little Bits had the number one toy. They had the the BB-8 robot. Yeah, they were and licensing. Then, they were licensing the from not C-3PO, the R2D2 from bot. Disney Marvel and yeah. Sphero had a post because we were talking to them around their Kickstarter, and we saw their public post about they're like, hey, like licensing from Disney is pretty tough. So yeah. they got out of that biz, and it looks like Little Bits did as well. I think it's a challenge because the 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 content you know they're they're doing like the best content and hardware, but how to do that without having Disney yeah it makes sense I mean like there's all these take, Marvel yeah, movies take all the there's all these Star Wars movies like trying yeah. to do Star Wars toys um, all these uh, Marvel movies try to do Marvel toys and like if it's educational bonus yeah. but um, I get that it's it's a hard market so then there, there's other acquisitions though 
Um, the other thing that happened, I think this was last year, that, August same yeah, time, DIY.org, they received $9.5 million in funding, and they were acquired by Little Bits. So it goes uh, DIY acquired by Little Bits, Little Bits acquired by Sphero. And you're, if you're wondering how much Sphero has in funding, they have $120 million altogether, 12 rounds. Um, the last time that they raised money, it says March 21st, 2019, from a product funding, uh, product crowdfunding that was their, their Kickstarter. Their Kickstarter. So we'll see. Oh, interesting that the one million or two, whatever the millions of dollars from Kickstarter ads in, that's added. I it think they sense. consider that a funding. It's round. funding so it's, I think yeah. it was just like one million or so. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens in this education space. There's um, a lot of there's a lot of good combination. I mean, Sphero also has the Spectrums, which is you know the little color. I think those were that was a company they those acquired color, too. The, yeah, yeah there's a company in Colorado, and so I think I think you know Little Bits has that ease of use. And Sphero has the robotics. What's, what is good is that they're both approaching the same thing with educational um, tutorials and content and hardware, but Sphero is really good at the robots, and Little Bits is really good at the creativity stuff. Yeah. It could be a really good match where Little Bits brings like the configurability to the robots. So it's like you have the rover, and then you want to add hardware. Maybe you use Little Bits to add yeah. sensors and hardware. So I don't, I don't journalize. Journalate. Journalate? I don't. I don't. I don't. I try. I, I keep track of all the stuff. Yeah. And like you and I, we only talk about all this industry world. Um, I wish I had the opportunity to write an article or interview some of the the folks involved. Probably yeah. not going to have time. Um, but it is interesting because the amount of funding is so high for some of these things. Like when Little Bit was up to like fifty or sixty million, I said, "Wow!" Like most investors like to see a ten x. So that's like six hundred million. Who's going to buy them for six hundred million? I'm like, well, well, Disney. I'm like, well, maybe a Disney would because they were part of that accelerator program. But I'm like, you know what? Maybe Mattel would. Maybe Hasbro. And then in the news, I saw that Hasbro just bought Death Row Records and all these other brands. So Hasbro and bought. My little pony. <laughs> yeah, Hasbro bought. Um, it just happened to be part of um, Enter Entertainment One, and they own Death Row Records. But in addition, and they own like they have this, they own this little pig. pig and like you know these things. Transformers. So they they have this entertainment company. So that that was for four billion. So that's there there is a possibility. But with things like Sphero, like if they're in the hundred and twenty million dollar range and they just acquired all these companies, ten yeah. x. 120 million is a billion, or they're going so they to go. They have to IPO. Or they, or they're going to go IPO. Who knows? So it's interesting um, in the education space. Uh, we tend to be on the low end of the education space. In other words, our stuff is 25 bucks. So we're not even. When, when people say like, "Oh, little bits or Sphero, those classroom packs are everything in the hundreds of dollars," we're in the 25 dollar range. So we're never usually compared to these companies. Yeah. Um, we we like being in the spot that we're we're at. But it will be interesting to see what happens the next year, two years, or more with uh, Sphero having little bits, and they have DIY. They have everything set up, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. So that's my maker news for, yeah. uh, for stuff. Okay. Job board. Jobs.adafruit.com. If you want to help out Micromag Magazine, they are looking for an editorial assistant working remote United Kingdom. If you've read Micromag, it's the volunteer 100% community made micro Micro magazine. Bit, micro Python. They're looking for Make help. code. You love those things? Yeah. M, 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 M. Let them know. Yep. And as always, you can post your jobs up on jobs.adafruit.com. Or if you want to post your skills up, you could do that and people can find you. Okay. We are still an open source hardware company. We are. And February is open source hardware month. It is. But um, to celebrate every week, we have guides. Yeah, we have 1,972 guides. What's on the big board this week, Lady Ada? Um, wow, we're getting really close to that magic 2,000. We're going to have a guide next week. On, it's a meta guide about guide counting. Um, this week, we had a ton of guides. We have from Brent Rubel, who has been slogging with no complaint through... Um, like half a dozen different circuit Python libraries and crypto authentication schemes. In order to do this, we can now communicate with Google Cloud IoT Core, which has a lot of cryptographic signing requirements. And so we had to add a ton of stuff to circuit Python, um, like NTP and bin ASCII and Hashlib and RSA and JWT. But we finally get to the point where we can now um, connect to Google Cloud IoT Core. He's, he says actually he's quite nice. He likes it a lot. Um, and connect to it with CircuitPython. In this case, uh, he made a project which is a Pi Portal IoT plant monitor. Um, this is good because it sends temperature and light levels and moisture levels, and then you can send back commands to turn on or off the pump. So it's a good bi-directional 
uh, demo. We also have, of course, that MQTT library that this uses. Um, but we're getting ready for the next one, which is going to be AWS, which is, of course, uh, a very challenging one as well because they have a lot of cryptographic requirements. Um, but we'll get there, and then we'll basically you'll be able to use CircuitPython with any of the online IoT services. We started with Adafruit IO because, of course, it was the easiest. Uh, but we're making our way up all the tough ones. Dana Wall has this cool, creepy 3D printed um, anim uh, beating heart. Um, it uses like a servo and this like XY gantry system inside. And there's a potentiometer, one of our slide pots you can use to change the beating speed. So it's kind of cool and creepy. You can maybe backlit this for Halloween. Isaac Wellish uh, wrote a guide to getting started with how to get Braille output for CircuitPython REPL. We want to do more stuff. We, we picked up one of these Orbit 20 um, Braille um, piezo writers, which are super cool. They have 20 characters of Braille, and we're using that with a screen reader, and uh, you know, we've never used one, so we're kind of learning how to put it together and get it working with software, yeah. um, and learning a lot of stuff. Like, not all software is, is screen reader compatible, so it's good for us to know, so we can open up uh, GitHub issues or fix them in code that we have control over. So this guide is getting started, how to get the REPL going using screen, um, things to watch out for, and how to use it with Mac OS and Windows. Yeah, one of the goals with this is getting a screen reader, uh, specifically this uh, Orbit device, to work with microcontrollers. So here's, uh, I have a little video. Yeah, so we're just starting with, let's get it working with computers, and then we're gonna yeah. move to microcontrollers. And so here's um, the Moo REPL and or Serial, whatever you wanna call it. And we also had it set up so you can hear what's going on on the screen too, because when I sent this video out, someone who was blind said, "Oh, my uh, wife, let me know what was on the video. That's really cool." So this time I said, "Oh, I'll have I'll have the screen reader also say what's going on." Yeah. So here it is. Hello world. Howdy partner. What's happening? Hi, y'all. What's up? Okay, what's next? Okay, next up we've got the Neo Trellis Feather Case Assembly Guide from Phil B. We put this part in the store we actually sold out. Uh, it's a lovely acrylic case uh, for our 4x4 Neo Trellis and a feather and battery and switch optional as well. So we have a guide for that. And here's just showing off. It's cool because you get full Neo Pixel color. When we first got the this 4x4 grid of buttons, everyone's like, why don't you have RGB LEDs? It's because NeoPixel uh, SMT LEDs didn't exist yet. Then they did, and now we have it, and that's done. Um, so Mike Brella, we have uh, using Teeny US, sorry, using Web USB with Teeny USB with Arduino. Uh, so we have it's a very uh, simple, straightforward guide, but basically how to get this color picker working um, with the Chrome browser on any operating system and Circuit Playground Express. So in Arduino, using Teeny USB, you can now add Web USB as one of the added uh, uh, USB peripheral interfaces. So it's good, we'll be doing more with WebUSB. Uh, Mike B wrote a guide on data logging and file storage and make code. There's a storage module which we didn't know about, but we, now we do. And uh, you can data log to the uh, built-in SPI flash on your circuit playground suite. He made a little uh, light temperature and soil moisture sensor uh, that logs from make code to the SPI flash and you can plot it using Excel or any other CSV plotting software. We've got Noam Pedro's cranky Adabot starter dispenser guide. We'll sh talk about that, show the video shortly, but it's got a little crank that you can crank your solder back in when you're done using it. Isn't that cute? Uh, from Chris Young, a guide on how to build a, an advanced infrared transmitter receiver board. Um, these boards are nice and powerful. They have transistors so you can send, uh, and I like how they have both a wide and narrow angle LED so you can get like good range and a wide range of infrared transmission. Uh, we also got a guide from uh, JP on customization. So if you have the Monster Mask kit, we've put a couple hundred in the store and you're like, you love the hazel eyes that comes with it, but maybe you wanna customize the eyes, do something different and special. Um, he goes through how you do the texture mapping so you can have the iris and the, the whites of the eyes be customized. You can display pretty much anything. You can even do some basic swirling animations for some cool effects. Uh, then we have uh, the MSA301 triple axis accelerometer guide from the board that we put in the store a little bit ago. Uh, and that pilot guide from Catney on how to run pilot locally for great pilot, make your code uh, sparkling clean 
and uh, easy to read by anyone using PyLint. It's got great suggestions. I recommend it. Okay. Next, uh, let's do some uh, factory footage. And it wouldn't be Main York City factory footage without a sunset or sunrise. All right. Time for 3D printing from Known yeah. Pedro. Yeah, this week we have um, the solder dispenser, the solder eater, Cranker. or the solder dispenser, and then we have a sped up for the Star Trek fans out there. So okay. we're gonna do these back to back. Take it away, Noah Pedro. Take it away. Hey, what's up folks? This week we're 3D printing a solder dispenser, this time with a crank. We think this is a fun way to store your solder and actually really fun. I mean, who doesn't like to use a crank? We designed this kit as a free download. Links are in the description. The head was dual extruded for printing the eyes and mouth in a different color. But we also have a single color version, you'll just need to print the pieces separately. The crank is a single part that features a print in place hinge with a free spinning handle. It's actually the same part from our USB HID project. The cover snap fits on top and can easily come off. It uses the gyroid infill so it has this neat pattern that makes it a bit stretchy. This lets you see through the top so you can check on the solder. The solder wire is press fitted onto this holder and it rotates freely so you can give it a nice spin. The holder fits inside the enclosure and pops into this socket just behind the ear. It can fit your standard solder spool but you could also resize it to fit something with a different diameter. The antenna is 3D printed separately and just pops into a hole in the ear cup. You can use super glue to stick some of the details like these pupils over the eyes. Just a drop is all you need since these are some pretty small pieces. Another piece is this ear cup that attaches to the side cover. Be sure to check out our learn guide for a full tutorial on this project. Next we can fit the holder into the side cover. Then snap the crank into the drive hub on the end of the spool holder. The cover slides into the enclosure by fitting the grooves through the railing. Then you can press the solder holder into the socket to pop it into place. 
It's fairly easy to take it apart so you can swap out the solder when it gets low. And there you have it, that's how it works and now you can make your time soldering a bit more fun. This could be a great way to keep your solder wire from getting all tangled up. I find it really satisfying to use, especially if you do a lot of soldering. The crank could also be used for projects that use trim pots or rotary encoders. If you have projects you'd like to share with us, we invite you to come on the show and tell. All participants will receive a free vinyl sticker. Also check out the Adafruit Discord server. There you can join the community, get project help, and share your projects. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. Don't forget every Wednesday, 3D Hangouts with No Impact, where you can learn how to make all this stuff. All right, before we head off into new products land, we have to do a reminder. We'll be shipping the next Ada box, the Halloween themed one, in a couple so... of weeks. So we have less than a couple hundred slots open. These are going to go super fast. So we're going to we're going to show you a video, and you're going to go to adabox.com and you're going to join us. That's yes. what you're going to do. That's the plan. Go do it. So because we always run out. And we always people, run out. People are like, oh, we always I wish, run I, out I, of I wish you would have told me. I wish you would have had a video. And here's the thing: we we already already made the boxes, so it's like we can't uh, make yeah. more. There's and a we, limit. There's physical yeah. limits. And what we like to do is ship them very fast, so we have to have a. a we we figured out the exact sweet spot of number of boxes, number of subscribers. So watch this video and then go to adabox.com and subscribe. But uh, here, you have not seen this yet. Oh, I haven't. No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, I'll see it then. Okay. Spooky. Subtle marketing. Um, <laughs> Those are folks around the lab, as you can yeah. tell. Yeah, RoboHearts code, 10% off an Adafruit store, all the way up to 159. The only thing it doesn't cover is Adabox. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do Adabox. Do Adabox right now. Um, pretty lady? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, we got a bunch of noops this week, starting off. We have this PDM microphone with a JST-SH cable attachment. We already had a PDM mic in the store for a through-hole solder attachment, but we wanted one that you can easily connect to a cable. And you already had these cables in for connecting to our like I2C quick boards. Um, this is not an I2C board, but it has a data and clock pin, so that made it kind of convenient. So if you want to have a PDM microphone that you can easily attach to a cable, uh, this is it. Uh, we have PDM support code for CircuitPython and Arduino M0 and I think M4, but not all chips support PDM. Like you definitely can't do it on like a 328. So just make sure that your chip can support PDM input uh, before you pick up this mic and try to wire it up. Next up. Next up. Feather floats its way to Seed where they've got a Grove Shield Featherwing. I mean, they call it for wheel light because it's their 
brand of the feathers. But basically, it's a feather uh, grove adapter wing, underwing thing. And I'll show this off. It's kind of nice. It uh, will fit any of our feathers. And it um, gives you a nice collection of grove connectors. So this is it. So you just plug in your feather here. And it's got you know the main row. And then it's got an extra row, which is kind of nice. And then it has all the pins labeled. Uh, the pin labeling that's used is the pin numbering on like the Feather M0, M4, NRF52840, and uh, uh, 32U40. Not all feathers, especially others from other companies or ESP32, don't have the exact same pin numbering. So just watch out for that. Like the connections are fine, but you know, for example, here it says D5, D60, 90, 10. That matches five, six, nine, ten on this feather, but not all feathers have that exact same pinout. Um, that said, uh, I squared C and SPI and the analog pins are going to be the same numbering because we always start with A zero through A five. So that makes it easy. And then um, if you have uh, something that has Grove connectors, you can get your Grove cable. You uh, plug it in to the connector here, and then you have quick plug and play connectivity to all sorts of different devices. This is a stem aboard, but it's uh, uh, Grove compatible. And like uh, Seed has like 50 or 100 different Grove devices that you can connect. Sensors, I squared T, U R, whatever you want. Uh, there's even a switch so you can select between whether you want to have um, 5 volt or battery to connect to the power pins on the Grove contacts. So this is a great way to uh, make a nice plug and play um, configuration for your feather and if your feather has headers already soldered on it uh, no soldering required just comes fully assembled and ready to rock next up we have this book it is in the store now yes we now have kathy's book uh it was coming soon but now it's here and we put together a pack as well so if you would like to follow along and make some of the projects uh kathy picked out parts from the Adafruit shop that will let you build a whole bunch of projects uh, from servos and LEDs, uh, batteries, alligator clips, and more. Um, it's not absolutely everything, but it's enough to get you like pretty, pretty close. Like everything we had in the store. So you can do like more than half of the activities uh, to build some of these fun uh, makerspace friendly, no solder robotics and electronics projects. We have a USB-C FTDI cable. We, it was one of our first products we've stocked was the FTDI cable and uh, time moves forward and, and we must keep up. Um, now we have a USB-C cable version. Um, this is a three volt FTDI cable. So the power and logic is both 3.3 volts. Um, that'll work with the vast majority of, of uh, devices that need um, to connect to an FTDI cable. Um, and what's nice is of course it's reversible. Uh, so we're starting off with, you know, we've got like 100 of these cables and we're going to try them out. Uh, so far, so good. They've worked on all the USB-C computers we've tried. Um, but we're going to slowly get more and more USB-C cables in as we transition from USB-A and Micro-B to USB-C. Um, from Pi Moroni, we now have the uh, Pi-Bo Coupe for the uh, Raspberry Pi 4. So the 4 came out and the Pi 4 is a complete change mechanically from the Pi 3 and Pi 2. So uh, we are now stocking this case, which is a slimline case, only has five layers, um, but that's good because it means you can easily attach hats or bonnets on top. And you can see there's even holes here so you can uh, screw them in. I have it actually with the fan shim attached, but I can, I can remove that to show. Uh, so this is for the Pi 4 only. We have separate cases if you want for the Pi 3s and such, and these have Nice labeling for, you know, what is the micro HDMI and the USB-C power requirements. And it has a cutout again for their fan shim, which we'll show off in a moment. Um, but for your uh, Pi 4, there is no more colorful case than this by far. The most colorful. Okay. Um, like and the, no tools required. The thing that you just showed was yes. on top of it. So this is the fan shim. So if you have a Pi 4, it's a very powerful computer and it's got a uh, heat spreader on the top of the chip. But if you're doing something that has a lot of computational needs and that would be like machine learning or really intense emulation or some sort of data processing, something where the process, all four processors are going at full speed, um, you will see a slowdown when it overheats. 
um, you won't, you'll never be able to damage your pie from overheating, but what can happen is as the processor gets hotter and hotter, it'll start throttling itself. It'll start slowing down so that it doesn't end up um, getting above a certain temperature. Or what you can do is put a heat sink or a fan on top. And so this fan shim is a lovely little easy plug and play thing. You get it in two pieces and you just, you know, screw the, um, you get some screws and you just attach the fan on. And then it just plugs uh, right onto the Raspberry Pi. And I think I need to reset it because it's probably unhappy. But it will um, start spinning. And then there's also a Python script that you can run that will um, monitor the, the speed. Actually, no, I think, there you go. It was a little bit too too low it'll monitor the temperature and if it gets too high it'll turn the fan on right now it's not doing anything so the fan isn't spinning but if um, I'm running some machine learning thing or emulation it'll turn on and will turn off when it's not in use there's also a side button that when you're running the script if you press the button it'll automatically turn on or off and there's a little RGB LED that will tell you the status as well so it's a really quiet little fan um, but great for adding um, quick cooling and they have some cool thermal images that they took as well um, that we'll add to the product guide but basically you can run it at full speed all four cores as long as you want as long as you have a fan on all right next up uh, next up we have the indoor gateway from the things network so we stocked the really big very fancy things network gateway it's a couple hundred dollars and if you want to uh, run a gateway that's smaller and more affordable this one is under 100 bucks, and it is, uses, I think, an ESP32 or 8266 as the Wi-Fi gateway, and then it has an eight-channel LoRa transceiver. So it's actually all eight channels, which is really nice. Usually you can't get an eight-channel transceiver for um, this price. And uh, what's really neat about the design is it's got, like, on the back this, um, uh, this little, um, like, adjustable... Um, plug adapter so if you wanted to use it in like Europe or the UK of course you use different plugs but in the US you use um, the US plugs that ours comes with and then you just plug it into the wall and you're ready to rock like after you've configured it um, it's got a power adapter in it to safely convert the power down and then here is the um, uh, wireless Wi-Fi module here with antenna and on the other side uh, the LoRa I think this is like a LoRa plug-in module that gives you that eight channel um, LoRa gateway. And it's USB-C powered, so if you don't want to plug it into the, into the wall, you can also just power it over USB-C. We got this set up in a couple minutes with the Things Network, so it's definitely like the most affordable eight channel gateway. And it'll work with all of our LoRa boards. We've got you know feathers and hats uh, for Raspberry Pis and breakouts and shields and all that good stuff for you to connect sensors to this gateway and then this gateway will take the LoRa data and transmit it to the Things Network where you can um, plot it or do more with your data. So this is a, a good base for an indoor sensor network. Okay, and the stars of the show tonight besides the community and new lady data are two products. Take it away, two products. Two products, so you've got an update. Some people are like, hey, could you get the Perma Proto Pi boards updated for the 2x20 because I, I released these back when it was 2x13 and uh, I finally was like yeah I should really do that so I did that a couple years later but I did do it um, so we've got the Perma Protos that people love but they're designed for use with the Raspberry Pi so what we did is um, as uh, the lovely photo shows um, it's the same size as a full size breadboard and you get 60 total rows, but the first 20 rows are actually set up to have this 2x20 IDC connector soldered in. And then you get four pins to connect to. And so you can solder wires from here or to the grounds. And each one is labeled with the matching Raspberry Pi pin number. So, you know, MOSI, MISO, S-Clock, uh, GPIO numbers and grounds and such. And then you can wire them up however you like, as if it was a breadboard and soldered in. So we've got it as These a full size. Yes, very handy. Um, you got it as a full size, and we also have it as a half size. The half size, of course, does not have as much space 
as the full size, but uh, it's still enough to do some basic little circuitry. And then, you know, you take your Raspberry Pi of any kind, Pi 4, Pi 0, whatever, you plug in um, this handy 2x20 cable and Adafruit Black, and then you just plug it in like so, and it's keyed, yeah. and uh, Bob's mm -hmm. your uncle. That's it. And then you can just, wire, you know, you, when you want to solder to it, you unplug the cable, and when you want it to uh, be ready for using again, you plug it back in. So it's very easy, but people really like these, and I kind of forgot to update these to 2x20, but now I did. So good job, me. Recap? It's time for recap. Recap time. Recap, recap, recap. Okay, we got the PDM microphone, uh, just like the other PDM mic we have, but this time it has a cable attachment, so you can connect a JCSH cable if you'd like for remote PDM microphoning. This is from Seed. It's a Grove Featherwing Shield. Uh, they designed it for the Wii Light, but you can use it with any feather, really. Plug it in, and you get 10 Grove connectors and a voltage selection switch. The uh, Cathesary Bots book is in stock very shortly, if not today, then tomorrow or someday soon. And we also have a pack that goes with it with uh, Circuit Playground and LEDs and batteries and motors, so you could build the projects in the book as well. We now have a USB-C version of the ubiquitous FTDI cable. This version has 3-volt power and 3-volt logic uh, and a USB-C connector so you can use it with modern computers. From Pi Maroney, we now have their uh, rainbow Pi Bow for Pi 4. It's a five layer, beautiful rainbow case for the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, it protects, it attacks, it allows you to use the fan chim, and it has like slots for the uh, Pi hats. So it's a really a well designed case um, that lets you easily attach more hardware to your Raspberry Pi. Speaking of stuff you want to attach on top, they also sent us some. Fan shims. This fan shim is designed for the Pi 4, but will also, of course, work with the Pi 3 or Pi 2, although you need it the most with the Pi 4 when you're doing a lot of computational, intense computations. I don't know. Uh, if you're getting all four cores running at full speed uh, so that it doesn't throttle, put the fan shim on, run the script, and when it starts to get close to overheating, boom, the fan kicks on and cools you right back down. The uh, Things, the Things Network TTN indoor router is an eight channel LoRaWAN router with a Wi-Fi gateway so you can get your um, LoRaWAN network connected and forwarding data up to the Things Network online. And it's the most affordable router they've made yet. And it's so handy, it even has a little plug. You can plug it right into the wall outlet using the handy adaptable wall outlet plug thingy on the back. And uh, you can basically make any home a LoRaWAN home. Updated for the Raspberry Pi modern 2x20 connectors, we now have the PermaPi, the PermaProto Raspberry Pi adapters that are designed specifically for use with Raspberry Pi because they've got that 2x20 IDC connector you solder in, has all the labels, uh, all the pins labeled, and you have some prototyping area as well. So perfect for making um, add-on hardware for your Raspberry Pi. That was new products. All right, well, um, if you want to put stuff in your cart and save 10% off, put RoboHeart. Who doesn't? On checkout. Yeah, don't forget, you got all these free things in addition to that, and it supports all of us here at Adafruit. Lady Ada, let's uh, do some top secret. I will. Okay. Okay. So top secret this week from the vault. What do we have? Um, well, first up, this was from uh, Brian. These were, uh, we didn't do a STEM Sunday this week. Because we, we had a bunch of stuff that was going on, but uh, we will be doing yeah, STEM you, you, Sunday. So here's Osh a photo Park. of yep. all the boards. We got some Osh Park PCBs coming in. So we've got the MPU 6050, the PCT 7, PCT 7025, and the TLV 493D, the magnetometer. The 493D actually already got done, so that's exciting. Yeah. Uh, so he did the. We, there's an Arduino library from Infineon already, which is lovely. I love when that happens. And uh, he wrote a Circuit Python library as well for this 3D magnetometer. Next up is going to be the PCT 7025, which is a low-cost digital temperature sensor. Okay, and uh, these you just sent me earlier. Yeah, and this is the final TLV 493D. 
with Katni's name on the back. She designed the board, and we're going to send this out. Okay, and then here's the um, videos. I didn't know if Facebook, Instagram would have released our um, AR stuff that we did, but we did. They did. So um, if you go to Instagram.com slash Adafruit or search for Adafruit and Instagram, add us, you'll see a little effects thing, a little face, and then you get the effects that you can add to your camera. So this, it looks awesome. real. This was like the first demo that we did. And then we updated the eyes and then we submitted it off and, it, and it, it's now live. Um, the cool thing is it's so real that you can't really tell what's going on. Um, and then we added some other ones, either the blinking eyes. You see in Circuit Python everywhere. Yeah. And then uh, here's uh, the NeoPixel. I like these, kind of a little bit steampunky. And then uh, we're working on the Circuit Python 5 poster. A um, couple more changes. Going to talk to Bruce, our designer. But uh, here's here's where it's at right now. So if you're wondering if we're going to have a poster for each version, yes. And that's what it's going to look like yes. so far. All right. V's. So questions. Bring them up. If you want to ask questions, go to adafruit.it slash discord. Um, I stored some of the questions that uh, folks had uh, said they want to ask. We have 13,000 people in Discord. Don't forget, you can go there all the time. Uh, we also added a new thing in Discord where our announcement channel, you can click follow. Uh, there's a, they, they have a special thing. So let's start asking the questions. Are you ready? Yes. OK. First up, uh, will the storage module in MakeCode work in MakeCode Arcade for the Pi Gamer? No Ever. idea. But it probably could. You'll just have to ask uh, the MakeCode team over in Discord to add okay. it. Um, someone looked up the Wikipedia thing with uh, Tux the, the penguin, and they said, Travolos took his inspiration from an image he found on an FTP site showing a penguin figurine looks strangely like the Creature Comforts characters made by Nick Park. That's okay. where that came from. Okay. I have a bunch of LiPo batteries where the wires broke off too close to the battery to solder on new ones. What is the correct environmentally sound way to dispose of them? Um, if you, in, in, at least in the U.S., um, look for your local town. Yeah. Uh, look, go to the Gov site, and they always have a battery disposal. We do this in yep. New York City, and that's the best way to do it. Cause or if you're careful, you know, you I, I have had wires break off, and you can carefully strip one wire at a time and reattach it. Just make sure not to short the battery okay. pins together. But if you're a skilled solder, you can do it. All right, can you uh, use the PDM mic on a Raspberry Pi? Raspberry Pi does not have PDM microphone support. Again, you get like you have to watch out. Not everything has it. Um, so the Raspberry Pi does not. It has I2S microphone support. Um, the thing we're using PDM mics on is, is microcontrollers. Um, although, you know, you can abuse DMA to SPI to get PDM mic in, but I feel like on a Raspberry Pi, you're just better off using I2S instead. It's kind of what it's designed to use. Okay, uh, I can answer this one. What's the status of Circuit Playground Express Bluefruit? Well, shipping. It's shipping, sign up. We're currently in alpha, so um, if you purchase one know that we're still working on lots of the software side of it but the hardware is essentially done yep okay next up uh question for later on oh this now it's now um on the 3d magnometers uh are those compass type magnometers that work on poles or the kind that react to local magnets this one the tlv is best for magnets um we do have in the store the mlx 3093 and the like the lsm 303 and those are designed for um, the low range like the very high sensitivity so you can use it to detect the magnetic um, poles of the earth so right. th this one is designed not for that it's not as sensitive but it has a wide range so it's great for if you're making it's actually designed for um, non-contact magnetic joysticks okay um, some people had tips you can go to batteries and light bulb stores they can take the batteries also, Energizer has a site. Here's the only thing I'll just say. Be careful when stores offer, because sometimes they say, oh, just fill out this thing. They're trying to get your contact information. Yeah. Just watch out for that. OK. Um, next up. Uh, Good tips. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hi, I have a Feather M4. I'm using what Circuit Python, but I accidentally double-clicked the main .py doc, and it opens up with Notepad, but the code does not run. How do I solve that? Try using Moo. Uh, the Moo editor will give you a REPL so you can yeah. see what's going on. Download made with, no, sorry. Uh, it's code, on with, co code with dot Moo. Runs on every operating system, and yeah. it will, um, you'll be able to edit the file. Notepad is not a great editor for code, um, so we don't recommend it. 
But Moo is a great editor and also yeah. gave you that REPL so you can see um, with Python, I'll tell you where the error is. Okay, uh, next up, what do you think the future of Arduino is? Do you plan to always support it? Also, can uh, we expect the hollow wing M4 Express soon? So why don't you handle the hollow wing M4 Express Halloween M4 Express is being made soon. Okay. So check back next week. And, you know, I think I could devote an entire show of where do you think the future of Arduino is. I'll tell you, we'll always support what we do. So we have the most libraries um, in Arduino. Yeah, we have like 200 plus libraries. Yeah, we're the number one producer of open source libraries. By far. Um, I will say, if you look at where the future of Arduino is, they're definitely moving towards an online IDE. They're definitely moving towards having embed is doing the compilation on things. So I think we're probably going to see a lot of uh, server-based IDE stuff with Arduino. Yeah. That's that's just what they're doing yeah. right now. So that that's one of the things. I also think they're um, moving to where uh, we like to be, which is uh, high-performance, low-cost things like their VLE boards. Yeah. Um, that's, that's where we've been going. I would like to see them adopt the Feather format. Pretty much everyone but Arduino did. They have the MKR format. Um, a million years ago, we said, hey, do you want to do an Arduino Feather? And never got back to us. So I would like to see them, because that would be a lot of nice consolidation. Also supporting um, Stemma, which gets you quick Grove Gravity, like something like that. I think that yeah. would be really good for the community. Let them know if you think it's a good idea. Uh, next up, does the USB-C FTDI cable have an LED? No. No. OK. Uh, burr, 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 burr. And I think those are all the questions. Yay. All right, if any of come in while we're doing the rest of this, uh, I'll try to sneak them in. Um, let's give some away. What do you want to give away this week? I think let's give away, I'm trying to think what would be good. Uh, let's give away a box book. Yeah, let's do that. I think that's the best one because the others need other things to make to make them okay, work. Okay, this is a nice book. Okay. What are the rules, Lydia? The rules are uh, the first person to call the phone number when it appears on the screen will win this wonderful bots book. Uh, if you already know how to build robots, it's a great gift for a younger person or a school that might like building stuff or makerspace. Um, first person to call the phone number, it'll ring twice. I'm going to say ahoy ahoy, and then I'm going to ask you your name and where you're calling from, and a project you're working on or you want to work on, and then I'm going to give you this bots book by Kathy. It's a, a beautifully illustrated book on building projects for makerspaces, and she's a great teacher, so it's... It's not just projects. It's like projects where you can actually learn stuff. Yeah. Not that projects aren't good, but the right. hard part is teaching people. So I posted up the phone number in a little bit of a delay because it's streaming. Yes. But, you know, you should be able to see it soon. Call this and, number. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Get a free book. Yeah. Oh. oh. It's ringing. It's going to ring twice. Okay, I'm going to pick it up. Yep. Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. Congratulations. You're either me in a mirror universe saying the same things, or you're the winner of a fabulous book. Congratulations. Hi, how are you? I'm uh, Abigail's son. Hi, Abigail. I'm working, uh, yeah, I'm working on my temperature sensor. Yeah. With the Arduino. Wow. And, uh, I'm displaying the information with the LCD. Wow, that's awesome. Well, congratulations. You're going to really love this book because it has Arduino projects and robotics projects. I'm going to send this to you. All you have to do is email support at adafruit.com, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, at adafruit.com and say, hey, it's Abby or Abigail, and I won the bots book, and okay. they'll send it to you. Product ID 4348. Yeah, tell them it's product, okay. tell them it's product number 4348 the bots book and then they'll they'll send that to you right away okay four three four eight correct yes. thank you so much that's very helpful okay all right thank well, you so much for the yeah congratulations on getting your temperature sensor working that's awesome okay thank okay. you so much good night i will present you next next week yes yeah come on show and tell okay come by we want to see you bye abigail bye have a good night good night Okay, what a nice person. Well, congratulations, Abigail. You've won this book. And if you're building Arduino stuff, this is going to be a perfect thing for you to explore more on. So very exciting. Yep. Okay, thanks, everybody. Okay, that's our show for tonight, everyone. Don't forget the code is RoboHeart, 10% Robo off from Adafruit Store, all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, or when I remember to turn off the code. Special thanks to Jesse May, who's working behind the scenes Thank here you, Jesse May. In our Slack chat, I believe. Uh, let me double check. 
Yes, I also see Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Um, at least the green dot and slide. So yeah. There, there. Um, special Good thanks to all the Adafruit team members uh, that are helping out in Discord, all the remote team members that are helping out, all of the uh, folks that help keep the Discord community fantastic. We're crossing the 14,000 mark soon. Uh, yes, and, and then, almost 2,000 guides, yeah. too, which is amazing. And special thanks to everyone who keeps this thing going. Thanks for allowing us to do Adafruit and not having to get funding and all these crazy things that are going on. I really don't want to get 12 rounds of funding. I, yeah, uh, we like shipping hardware. That um, takes a lot of time, by the way. It's not just like going to the bank. <laughs> you, yeah. have to, you have to do a dog and pony show. Yeah, and I don't think investors would like that we do all this free stuff. But if we did, I want to be the pony. You have to be the dog. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, Wolf. So we'll see everybody next week. Yes. Even though it's a holiday, on Monday we'll still be doing Ask an Engineer on Wednesday. Yes, and next week we should have even more spooky Hallow Wingtronics coming your way. Yep. Think okay. Here Thank is you, everybody. Your moment of Zener. Bye.